is all about a little bit of indulgence. So we're actually going to make a beautiful brioche dough. So a lot of people, I suppose, I suppose it's just been used to the, the rubbish that we find in a lot of supermarkets, think that brioche is quite sweet. In fact, it's actually rich rather than sweet. So it's all about eggs, butter, a little bit of milk. Brioche is probably the ultimate in rich dough. It's kind of where everything kind of deviates and comes from. So from any of our little sweet doughs from our cinnamons or donuts, they would originally come from a brioche style dough. When you kind of see the ingredients we're using, you might think it's a little bit crazy, but believe me, go with it. It's absolutely worth it. So like to 500 grams of strong flour or bread flour, we're actually going to add six whole fresh free range organic eggs and 250 grams of proper butter. So this dough, it is quite wet, so I would suggest using a mixer, um, so which is exactly what we're going to do here. So straight into our mixer, we're simply going to crack in our six eggs. Generally a good medium sized egg, typically about 50 grams in weight. So this dough really works sweet, it works savoury, perfect for likes of Christmas where you really kind of want to spoil some people. We're adding in our 500 grams of strong flour. Again, we're just adding a teaspoon of salt. We're only adding 50 grams of sugar because we just want a little sweetness. But as I say, realistically, this dough is all about the butter. It's all about the eggs. And because it's such a high level of uh, egg that's gone into the dough, we're actually only using 100 grams of milk. That's the only liquid it's going to get. And this time we're using about 15 grams of fresh yeast. Um, or if you're using some dry yeast, about one sachet, about seven grams. And then to our dough, just to give it a little bit of citrus, we're actually going to add a little bit of lemon and a little bit of orange. Because later on with this dough, we have two things planned for it. We're going to make a beautiful loaf of brioche, but then we're also going to make some little individual little brioche buns, which is topped with a nib sugar and stuffed with a chocolate ganache. So about the zest of half a lemon, half an orange, and then straight onto our mixer. So then you can let your mixer start at a nice, gentle, medium speed. So everyone's tendency is kind of crank the mixer up, go for a higher speed. But we want to have a nice, gentle, slow mix because we don't want to create too much heat uh, within our dough. So it's called the friction temperature. It's the heat that's generated by the mixer. Um, so we won't, don't want our dough to get too hot or too warm. So you'll always kind of find working with an enriched dough that the kneading time is always longer regardless if you do it by hand or do it a mixer. So you're probably, you will find it's going to be a good eight to 10 minutes. So don't be worrying, it will come together. Just be patient and stick with it. It's quite wet, but it's slowly starting to come away from the sides. So at this stage, we're just going to start nice and slowly dropping our butter in. And we're probably going to, we're going to do it in about three stages. So don't just throw it all in one go. It's about a third at a time. We let all the butter incorporate. Once there's no trace of butter, we'll add the next amount. And we're using cold butter again, because again, we don't want to create too much heat within the dough. So you can see it as it kind of works and develops. So the butter has all worked its way into the dough. So from here then, we're simply going to go the next quantity of it. So again, don't be in too much of a hurry. Let the dough take its time, nice, gentle, medium speed. And if it takes eight to 10 minutes, so be it, no problem at all. And finally then, the last one of butter. So our, our dough has been mixed away. Realistically, it's been a good 10 minutes or more. Um, and it does look like kind of a wet, sticky mess. It looks like it's never going to come together. But as you can see, as the dough is developed, it's kneaded in all that lovely butter and it's starting to pull away cleanly from the bowl. And that kind of tells you when your dough's ready. It's good to go. And just to make your life a little bit easier and make the dough a little bit easier to handle, just put a little bit of oil on your hands. It just stops the dough from sticking. So you can see the dough is beautifully and smooth, beautifully and elastic. It's got that gorgeous richness from the butter, from the eggs, and little speckles of orange and lemon zest going through our dough. We're just going to pop it into our bowl, and we're going to let that prove. We're going to let this dough ferment overnight, and we're going to let it ferment in the fridge, because you'll feel how lovely and soft, how lovely and silky it is, but when it comes to working with it, it can be quite difficult, uh, particularly when you're not used to kind of working with softer, wetter doughs. But, so by proving in the fridge, it helps extend the proving period, 
uh, creates more flavor within the dough, but also allows the dough an opportunity to firm up, which is gonna make it much, much easier to handle and much easier to shape. So this dough will quite happily sit in the fridge for up to two days. So it can be made in advance, no problem at all. So you'll see the difference in the dough. You can see kind of how beautiful and smooth, beautiful and elastic it is. And here's a dough which I would have made yesterday. It's been sitting out for the last hour or so, but you can see it's much firmer, much easier to work, much easier to manipulate. So with this dough, our dough is ready to go now. It just needs to be portioned, it needs to be shaped. Um, very simply, what we're going to do is we're going to do two things. We're going to make a beautiful loaf of brioche. So this is just kind of about a one pound loaf tin. So ideally it wants about 400 to 450 grams of dough, which is the perfect size to fill this. But also what we're going to do is make these little individual chocolate and orange brioche using these little paper molds, um, which you kind of pick up in any little kitchen shop. Um, but if you don't have them, a, a little muffin tray will work absolutely perfect as well. When it comes to shaping it, we're going to shape it slightly differently. I suppose it's just a very simple, kind of boring, tinned loaf. So we're going to divide into four. Looking for each one to be about 100 grams. So you might find you need a little bit of flair. Again, not too much. Just enough to how you can manipulate and move the dough. So when we're rolling it, we're kind of using this part of our hand. So we're going to work the dough from here into here. So the idea is you're pushing the dough into the table, a big circle, kind of keep your hand like a claw so it rolls in this part of your dough. Big circle, a little bit faster, and you should be left with a nice little ball. When you're rolling it, a lot of people tend to kind of go little tiny little space. Exaggerate, you need to use the space. Big circle. As the dough grips, your hand comes up a little bit faster, and you're left with a nice little ball. Again, not too much flour on the table because we need the dough to grip the table. So ideally, just a little bit of flour on your hands. So then, just for a little loaf, we're simply going to give them a little roll up. Pop them in side by side. As they bake, they'll become one. There's a beautiful little effect on it. And you have a beautiful loaf of brioche. This is, as a French toast, absolutely stunning. So it kind of works sweet, works savory. A great is a little, with a little starter. Keeps for days, toasted up, it's stunning. Just proper, a little bit of indulgence. For our little individual chocolate and brioche molds, which we're planning. So these are quite kind of small and quite dainty. So we're only looking at very, about 30 grams of dough is all that we need. Again, just depend on what you're using. If you're using your muffin tray or little molds, if they're a little bit bigger, you just might find that you need a little bit more dough. So just to shape them, very simply, just roll them into a little ball to begin with. So then just in case they weren't indulging enough, all we're simply going to do is take our little dough, kind of flatten it down, make a kind of little pocket in the center. And then I've got some chocolate ganache here, which is very simply just a mix of cream, chocolate, and a little bit of butter. Pop it into the center, and we're simply kind of trapping it in. A little roll around. Can you imagine waking up, say Christmas morning, you got your family around and you pull these guys warm out of the oven. I know what I'll be baking Christmas morning. So then we're simply just going to take a damp cloth and we're going to top them with a little bit of nib sugar. Similarly from the bottom into the damp cloth. Kind of acts a bit like glue and then into our nib sugar. It just helps them to stick. So it gives a kind of a crunchy top to it then. We're gonna caramelize it as it bakes. So yeah, again, we're just using a little bit of nib sugar. If you don't have it, um, crushed nuts will absolutely work great. And the exact same process, a little damp cloth into your crushed nuts, just helps them to stick. Because often what you'll find if you just stick it straight in, they tend to fall back off again. So you'll always find within rich doughs that the proving time is always much, much longer. Um, because there's so much fat and richness in the dough, it tends to inhibit the yeast. So you'll always find your proving time longer than say you would have with just a regular straight yeasted bread. So from shaping, these guys could be looking at a good, depending obviously how, what temperature the dough is at, it could be up to two to three hours before you're ready to bake. Or again, at this stage, we could simply just cover these over, pop them in the fridge, leave them there again overnight, and the following morning, take them out, 
let them sit out for maybe like an hour, an hour and a half, and then bake them. It's been proven for the last two, two and a half hours. Again, with the proving times, you have to kind of take it as a bit of a guide. It's not going to be exact because particularly conditions are always changing. Um, so if you find that your kitchen's a little bit warmer, uh, you might find your dough's moving a little bit quicker. Or again, if it's a little bit colder, particularly coming into winter, if your dough's moving a bit slower, don't be afraid to give it an extra 20, 30 minutes, whatever it needs. So you can see our dough is beautifully risen. Our little loaves, you can see how they kind of come together to form one kind of whole loaf. We had our four little individual rolls. Again, when it comes to your dough, you only ever want to prove it 80%. The idea is the last 20 will come in the oven. So it's called the oven spring. So the idea is the dough should have a nice little bounce to it, but there's no fear of it collapsing. Because you kind of find, if you kind of felt that you kind of touch it, that the whole thing was going to sink, basically, or starting to spread out a lot, basically you've overproved your dough. So you want to catch it a little bit sooner. So just reduce your proving time if you find that happening. So just to help give a nice little golden finish, we're just going to brush it with a little bit of beaten egg. This is just a whole egg and a tiny pinch of salt. The salt just helps to break down the protein so you don't have all those little stringy bits. And then just with our little individual loaves, you can see they've come just to the top of our little mould. Nice little bounce to them. Remember now they're stuffed full of our chocolate ganache, topped with the nib sugar. We're not going to brush any of these guys at all. We're going to leave them as is and then simply going to bake these in the oven. So we're looking at about 200 degrees for the, the little individual ones because of the weight and the size. You're probably only looking about 12 to 14 minutes. For our loaves, which are a little bit bigger and just to ensure that we bake all the way through to the center, you're probably looking at a good 35 minutes at 200 degrees. To help with the rise and protect the dough as it's rising, just for the initial eight to 10 minutes, we're gonna add a little bit of steam to our oven. So our oven is nice and preheated. I'm literally just gonna take a little bit of water and pour it into the base of the oven. Our little brioche are just out of the oven. And you can see they jump absolutely. They get great rise in the oven. Literally 12 minutes, 200 degrees, and they are done. And to be honest, you've got to feel these. They're literally light as a feather. So it's topped with our new sugar. Like you saw earlier, we would have stuffed it with a rich chocolate ganache. If we get into it, our molten chocolate center. Warm straight from the oven. Stunning. So now we've got our, our beautiful brioche loaves, about 35 minutes, 200 degrees. The dough probably looks a little bit heavy. You think it's going to be quite dense. It's really, really rich. It's got butter, it's got eggs, but you really got to feel how light this is. And you can eat, oh, you can smell the butter from it. It's just beautiful and rich. Gorgeous, gorgeous loaf to have. Perfect for your French toast. Like basically it's the ultimate French toast. Toasted with pate, with cured meats, goat's cheese. Possibilities are endless. We've got sweet, we've got savory. The dough works absolutely great. It'll keep for up to two days in the fridge, so you could bake a loaf today, take, use half the dough, go back again tomorrow, make another loaf again. So you got fresh loaves coming out the next couple of days. Mm -hmm.